Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest Top 5 episode. This is the show where I take a topic in progressive rock and give you guys a Top 5 list. Just off the top of my head, these are topics generated by my wife. She's really become involved in the show in that way and it's been really great. And she comes up with great ideas and great topics. And I just try to come up with something off the top of my head without much research, just from my previous prog knowledge. And so it's a little bit off the cuff and a little bit just me talking about what I love and hoping you guys will weigh in in the comments. Um, so please subscribe if you haven't yet. I really enjoy doing these top five episodes. I try to do them fairly regularly. And so if you are interested in, in more progressive rock content, there's tons to be had on this channel. Great album recommendations and listen throughs of different progressive rock songs with my wife. It's a fun time and I keep you guys up to date with the latest prog news. So please subscribe if you haven't yet. It would be really appreciated and help my channel. But yeah, getting into the topic at hand today, I thought it would be a fun topic. Uh, my wife came up with best epics of the 2000s. I've been doing this series a little bit throughout this run of top five. I did uh, top epics of the 70s and of the 80s and of the 90s. And so now we're moving into the 2000s. And I consider this between the year 2000 and 2009, essentially, is what I'm talking about when I say 2000s. And this is one of my favorite eras of progressive rock. This is really where my love of progressive rock flourished and where I became a big fan of the modern progressive rock scene. As I've as well documented on the channel, I really got into progressive rock from my dad and, and the stuff that he loved from the 70s, and it made me curious about what was being released nowadays in the genre of prog, and it led me to a lot of cool and interesting bands such as Transatlantic, Spock's Beard, Flower Kings, Dream Theater, and all of those usual suspects who you're going to be hearing about today on this list for these epics of the 2000s. And there's tons to choose from. I actually have a really long honorable mentions list. I don't want to take too much of the fire away from you guys in the comment section, but I'm going to briefly just run down my list just to show you guys how strong the epics were in this decade if you followed modern progressive rock like I do. I thought about The Tangent in earnest from A Place in the Queue, an incredible opening epic on that record. Uh, Big Big Trains, The Underfall, Yard came out in 2009, a really wonderful uh, epic from them. Uh, Moon Safari had a few epics. I pick, I thought of Methuselah's Children uh, from 2008 from their Bloom Jude record. Just a fantastic, beautiful track that really showcases the band and their beautiful blend of harmonies and all of that stuff. I thought about Spock's Beard, The Great Nothing from their Five record, the ending epic to end all epics from that album from Neil Morrison Company. Just a beautiful statement. Speaking of Neil Morse, I thought of The Door from Soul Scriptura from 2007. Incredible heavier side to his sound, but blends really well with his typical proggy stylings and just really a great showcase for Neil Morse's talent on that album and that track in particular. I thought about Me by uh, Echolin, which is really an album length track. It really goes through the whole album. It's from 2004. I really love that album. I think it's fantastic. And it's just one continuous song throughout. Beardfish is Sleeping in Traffic from 2008 is a fantastic epic. I love their early works, and this was really a great statement of theirs. IQ's Harvest of Souls from 2008 was fantastic. Really brings back a bit of that Supper's Ready style um, in a newer era. Symphony X's The Odyssey for more of a progressive metal style song was a fantastic track, really delving into that lane of showcasing a story and really going through a lot of different moods and modes and different sections. Merlion's Ocean Cloud from the Marbles record is just a fantastic epic from them. One of my favorite Merlion tracks of all time. And I thought about Porcupine Trees Anesthetize from Fear of a Blank Planet from 2007. Just a really fantastic extended piece from them that really showcases all the different facets of their sound. So those are just the honorable mentions, if you can imagine. Uh, Ten really epic tracks that I really love. But let's get into the list proper. Choice number five, I've picked Dream Theater's The Count of Tuscany from 2009's Black Clouds and Silver Linings. I, I really love this record. It's the last record they had with Mike Portnoy. And it came out 
when I was really developing my love for the band. And I thought this album really hit hard when it came out. It just had, it was bookended by these really amazing epics. The opening is a nightmare to remember. I loved the heartfelt track that was about Mike's father that was really special, uh, The Best of Times. And it just it was a really cool album that I thought really showcased some of my favorite facets of the band. But it all culminated in this epic track, The Count of Tuscany, which really showcases Dream Theater at their best. It has some really fascinating instrumental sections that really allows them to shine. It has this really cool extended atmospheric middle section that really delves into this Pink Floyd style sound. And then it ends with a really beautiful melody that really ends the, the track in a beautiful, beautiful way. Um, and a lot of people probably harp on the fact that the lyrics can feel a bit cheesy. It's kind of almost a silly story about, I think it was John Petrucci went, was invited to this house, uh, this like mansion, and, and he felt kind of creeped out by it, by the story about the Count of Tuscany, and, and thought he was fearing for his life about it, but it ended up just being like just a story and nothing to really be afraid of and almost a misunderstanding. So uh, it's kind of funny in a way, but I, I, I always get a chuckle out of the lyrics and about some of the moments on it. But overall, musically, I just think it's brilliant and it showcases the band really showing a fantastic side of, of their sound and their ability levels. Uh, number four on my list, maybe a bit more obscure compared to a lot of the ones I've mentioned, uh, but this is Car Mechanic and their track Send a Message from the Heart. Uh, I really love Car Mechanic. This is basically a side uh, offshoot of Jonas Reingold, who is a member of the Flower Kings. Uh, really fantastic symphonic prog band I really recommend. And this is one of their signature tracks, to me at least. Um, I think this is a fantastic record overall, but this track in particular just really stands out and showcases all that I like in Symphonic Prague with some epic moments, some great playing, uh, just really catchy at parts, and just has a really memorable hook, and just soars and really leaves you feeling satisfied. And that, to me, is all the hallmarks of great epic stuff. The album it comes from is Who's the Boss in the Factory, which is a fantastic record I recommend you guys seeking out and checking out. Hopefully there will be a new Car Mechanic record sometime in the next year or so is what I would hope for. Uh, but a fantastic, uh, lesser known maybe, uh, but probably fairly known by fans of Flower Kings and a lot of modern symphonic prog. Uh, item number three on my list is Frost and their epic Million Town from 2006. I've talked a bit about Frost on the channel. I really love their sound, and I feel like Million Town in particular really was a defining album for me that really brought this new love of, of more modern progressive rock into my life. You know, this neo prog sound, but with a bit more modern touches to it in the production and in the styling. And this ending closing epic is just everything I want from a band like this. It just goes through so many moments and it's just beautiful and it's it it feels very focused and has a very clear direction to it throughout. It just I really like the flow of it. Sometimes certain epics can feel a bit piecemeal where it's this section plus this section plus this section. But I feel like this one really flows together well and each section really plays well to the whole of the track and it's just beautifully composed has some really fireworks playing moments uh but also has some fantastic memorable melodies and i like some of the like false endings near the end where you think it's it's closing out an ending but then there's another section to really bring back the energy and really give you that coda and that satisfying finish so i really love this track i think frost has just a unique cool sound all of their own and this is just a signature track for me and my love of progressive rock. Uh, number two, I've picked the Flower Kings. I feel like the Flower Kings are really known for their epic pieces, so you have to include something from them. And my choice is The Truth Will Set You Free from 2002 uh, Unfold the Future. Just an incredible opening epic that showcases all that's best about the band. Uh, Royna Stoltz is perfect here, both with his guitar playing and some of his singing sections. There's epic moments, there's crazy instrumental passages that really take you on a journey. It just, 
I love the diversity of the prog epic that, you know, some people might say, oh, how can you listen to one song for 30 minutes? You know, that just sounds like a chore. But what's interesting to me about it is that it gives them a big playground to play within and you're able to explore a lot of different sounds and a lot of different styles. And these epics don't just stay in the same song, in the same lane with the same basic melody. They're able to continue forward and either introduce new melodies and themes or repurpose some of the early opening melodies and themes to sound completely different and fascinating in a whole new way or done in a new style or done by a different instrument or or done in a different key or whatever you want to do with it. And it just allows for these expanded pieces that really bring back cool themes that really are able to express different lyrical stories and content and keep in the same wheelhouse and to me that's what i love about progressive rock and what these tracks are able to do and i think the flower kings with the truth will set you free really showcase that in a great way and it's an album that really stands out to me as one of my early progressive rock albums that i just loved you know it was one that i received and was just getting into the flower kings at the time and this epic is the first thing you hear on the record and it just blew me away at first listen but there can be only one number one and it has to be you know if you know this channel if you know me and my particular <laughs> tendencies and what i like i had to pick transatlantic at number one to me the master of the modern prog epic uh this is stranger in your soul from 2001's uh, bridge across forever just a fantastic statement by the group uh, once again, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot with these descriptions, but uh, I really like what Neil Morse is able to do here with the progressive epic and really builds a fascinating piece that showcases the band's technical ability and playing, but really has a great emotional arc. I think that's what Neil Morse does fantastically well, is he builds a story that has very much an arc to it that has an emotional climax and, and is able to build up towards that and just give you that emotional release once it comes. You know, he's able to preview that big epic closing towards the midsection so that it has that much more weight when they bring back those epic grand themes to their grand and most epic of conclusions. You know, it's just an incredible showcase for the group and really shows all that's possible with modern Prague. I'm sure it delves back into a lot of those influences from the past progressive rock giants, but I feel like they introduce enough new elements to make it feel fresh and modern also. There's some heavier sections that almost harken to some of the progressive metal side of the progressive sphere, um, but still grounded in that classic root of progressive rock with great melodies, great singable sections, and just some fascinating playing from everyone involved. Everyone's on the top of their game and level here. So always been a piece that stood out to me as special and always been one of my favorites of all time. So those are some of my favorite epics. The list, like I always say with these things, is fluid. Uh, I would probably order it completely different if I was asked the same question, you know, a few weeks from now. But those are some of my favorite epics from the 2000s. I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions. I know there's many more to choose from. Uh, let me know your lists in the comments. Uh, I would be really fascinating to see what you guys think and how you feel about this subject. So thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a blast. And I hope you guys stick around on the channel and will we'll join me on future videos. So thank you guys and keep enjoying the music. Bye, everybody.